Hey everyone, in today's video, we will learn how to make a website like this in simple steps. This video is beginner friendly, and by the end of it, you will be able to make a website on your own. Two fundamental components are necessary for website creation, a domain and hosting. Think of the domain as your website's name, and hosting as the place where your website keeps all its important files. For the ease of access, I have placed links on top of the description of this video. So we're going to start there. I will click on the first link, and this will take us to Namecheap, one of the largest domain registrars in the world. Now we can type in the domain name that we would like to get. I will go with techuptrend.com. We will click on search. Great, the domain is available. If we hover over this little I sign, it says that if we are a new user, we can apply a promo code and get this domain for $5.98. We will click on Add to Cart. At the bottom right of our screen, we will click on Checkout. I will register the domain for one year and leave the Auto Renew unchecked. What is good about Namecheap is that they offer free domain privacy forever without charging us extra. This means that our personal information is hidden from the public voice database. If you are a new user, you can apply the promo code NEWCOM598 here on the right side. Once you click on apply, you will be prompted to log in or create an account. Since I already have an account, I'm going to click on log in and fill in my username and password. Now, if I try to apply the code, it won't work since I already used it before. We will click on confirm order. If we scroll down, we can edit our payment details by clicking on Change. You can select whichever method you prefer. We will make sure to uncheck the automatic renewal and click on Continue. After that, we can click on Pay Now. And for this part, we will click on Manage and stay on this page, as we will have to edit the name servers later. Now, since we have successfully registered our domain, I'm going to click on the second link. This will take us to Big Scoots, a web hosting company. We will go to Products, and under Web Hosting, we will click on Shared. Here, we will select the first plan, since we are just starting out. If you notice, we could have registered our domain with this provider. The reason why we didn't is that they charge a lot more, and they do not provide free domain privacy. Also, it is a good practice to have separate domain and hosting providers. Now, we will click on I already own a domain, and I will type in Tech Uptrend. On the right side, you can apply my promo code, Catones, to get 25% off on this purchase. Only the first 10 users will have this benefit. We will click on Continue. I will leave the billing cycle on monthly, and click on continue again. Here, you can enter all of your information. Since I'm already a client, I will click on already registered. I'm gonna quickly enter my email and password and click on submit. I will accept the terms of service and select PayPal as payment method. I'm gonna quickly enter my email and click on checkout. Since the coupon I entered is from my own account, I get the notification that it cannot be applied to my order. Now we will have to wait till we are redirected to the selected payment gateway. And here it is. I will enter my PayPal information. And I will click on agree and subscribe. The payment was successful. I'm going to click on return to merchant. And this is my invoice. You will receive all of this information in your email so there is no need to download it. Now, we will click on Services, Shared SSD Hosting, and on the right side, we will click on this arrow. Great, our server is ready. But before we access the control panel, we will update our domain name servers to point to Big Scoots. I will click on the Namecheap tab that we left open earlier. Next to Name Servers, I will choose Custom DNS from the drop-down. On the first line, we will type ns1.bigscoots.com and on the second, we will just replace ns1 with ns2. We will click on the green check mark to save the changes. 
Now we get the notification that the DNS server update may take up to 48 hours to take effect. This usually takes up to 30 minutes, but you can always check if it has been updated. Simply go to dnschecker.org, click on DNS lookup, enter the domain, click on lookup DNS, and under the NS section, you can see which name servers the domain is using. Additionally, we will scroll back up, click on home, and check the DNS propagation for our domain. If we get the green check marks, it means that we're all set. Now we will close this tab. We will click on access control panel and click here to access control panel. The first thing that we will do is install the SSL certificate for our website. SSL certificates are what enable websites to use HTTPS, which is more secure than HTTP. A website needs an SSL certificate in order to keep user data secure, verify ownership of the website, prevent attackers from creating a fake version of the site, and gain user trust. Here, next to my domain, we can see that a lock is closed, which means that I already have an SSL certificate. For you, it might look something like this. We will scroll down, and under Security, we will click on SSL TLS status. Here, if the certificate is not validated, we will click on Run Auto SSL. Once it finishes, we will get a notification. After that, we will click on Tools, and we can proceed with the WordPress installation. We will click on WordPress Manager by Softaculous. Now, we will click on Install. And here are some settings we can configure from the start. I will change site name to Tech Uptrend and description to something like Trending Technology. On the right side, you can set your admin username and password. I will just go with the default and save it in a text file. Under the advanced options, I will disable the automatic upgrade on plugins and themes. And we can click on install. After the installation is finished, we will click on return to WordPress management. I will close these notifications. If you are not migrating the website and building it directly on the server, you can disable it from search engines here. Once you are ready to go live, you can enable it. Now, we will click on the link and we can preview the default look of our website. To access our WordPress dashboard, we will simply add forward slash wp-admin at the end of our link. I will enter my username and password. Click on Remember Me and log in. I will save my information in the Google Password Manager. To switch between the website and the dashboard, we can click on the website name in the top left corner. I will quickly dismiss this message. Now we will hover over Appearance and click on Themes. We will click on Add New Theme. We are going to look for the Astra theme. You might see it here already since it is a popular theme, but for the learning experience, we are going to search for it with the search bar. We will type Astra and click Install. Now we can click on Activate. Here we can see that the currently active theme is Astra, so we can proceed and delete the other themes. We will click on the Theme Details, Delete, and OK. And we can repeat the process with the rest. Now we will click on Plugins. Here we are already getting a recommendation for the Starter Templates plugin, but similarly to Themes, we will search for it. I will close this notification and click on Add New Plugin. In the search box, we will type Starter Templates and click on Install Now. We will click Activate. Choose Build with Templates and Elementor as the page builder. 
Here, you can feel free to browse which template might suit your needs the best. I found this one. I will click on it. On the left side, you can add your logo from the start, but we will learn how to do that later. For now, we will click on skip and continue. Here, we can choose different colors and fonts. I will go with blue and Poppins Open Sans font combination and click on continue. This starter template comes with some premium plugins. Since we will not be using that feature, we can skip and start importing. None of the fields here are required, so we can simply click on submit. We will click on view your website. Great, our website is ready. In this next segment, we will learn how to edit certain areas of our website. What is good about this is that not only has the home page been created, but the other pages as well. We will explore some, but feel free to look around. I will go back to the home page. To edit our page, we will click on Edit with Elementor. On the left side, we can find all the elements that we'd want to add to our page. Also, we can simply click on the elements we'd like to edit. Once the element is selected, we can customize it by clicking on Style. Now let's say that we want to change the color of this button. We will click on it, go to Style, click on Color Picker, and choose our color. We will scroll down, and let's say we'd like to replace Randy Cordova with some other student. We will click on the image, and on the left side, we will click on Choose Image. We can simply drag and drop to upload our new image, and click on Select. We will change his name to Tristan Campos. To save our changes, we will click on Update. We can click on Preview Changes. We can see that the changes were successfully updated. Now, let's learn how to change logo and site icon. We will click on Customize, Site Identity, and select Site Icon. We will drag and drop our image, click on Select, and Crop Image. We can see that the icon is updated on our tab. We will click on Publish to save changes. Now, we will click on Site Title and Logo Settings. Here, we can see that the logo on this page is set from the Transparent Header section, so we will click on Customize Transparent Header. We can remove both of these, or we can simply toggle off the switch for different transparent logo. We will go back, click on Site Title and Logo, and remove these logos as well. Since I don't have a logo to upload, I will enable site title visibility on all devices. We will click on Design, change title color to white, and hover color to gray. We will click on Publish to save changes. You might notice that we still don't see our title. This is a small bug. However, if we close customization and the page gets refreshed, it will be visible. Now, we will learn how to edit individual elements in the header. We will click on Customize. And notice how next to each element we have this pen. Clicking on it will allow us to edit the chosen element. Let's say we want to edit the button. We will click on the pen, go to Design, and change the background color. We will click on Publish and close the customization. Now we will learn how to edit our menu in the header. Let's say we want to remove the page All Courses from it. We will go to our dashboard and under the Appearance we will click on Menus. Here we will make sure that the primary menu is selected. We will click on the drop down arrow for the page we want to delete from the menu and click on Remove. 
You can also reposition the pages, simply by dragging them one above another. Once we have finished making changes to our menu, we will click on Save Menu and go back to our page. We can see that the All Courses page has disappeared from the menu. Now, we will learn how to edit our footer. We will click on Customize and scroll down to the end of the page. Just like the header, we will hover over the element we want to edit and click on the pen. Let's say we want to edit contact info. We will click on the pen and on the left side, we will update our text. I will change this to my new address and we can see that the text is updated. We can edit any element that we'd like. Let's say we want to exclude some of the social icons. We will click on the pen and on the left side, we will hide the ones that we do not want. Now, since this is not our logo, we will edit this widget. We will click on the plus to add a heading block, and I will type tech uptrend. We will move this block up to the first position. We will click on the image, on these three dots, and delete. Now we can publish our changes and exit customization. If we go all the way down, we can see that our footer is updated. And for the last part, we will learn how to delete and add new pages and insert pre made blocks by starter templates. We will go to our dashboard and click on pages. Previously, we removed the all courses page from our menu. Let's say that we want to remove it completely. We will simply hover over and click Trash. Now, if we want to create a new page, we will click on Add New Page. I'm going to type my new page as a title and click on Edit with Elementor. Here, we will click on the Starter Templates icon and search for the block we'd like to add to our page. I will select this block and click on Import Block. We can proceed with editing individual elements of this block. For example, we will click on this element and see that it is a some type of form. From the drop down on the left side, we can select subscribe form and we will get something similar to our area above footer. Once we are done making changes, we will click on publish and preview changes. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to join our community, check out patreon.com/catones. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.